Yeah, I caught you, Stella. Yeah, you look like you're fine. You're just being a dog. <laughs> what is good, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys enjoyed the last one. That trip to Pennsylvania was pretty chill. Seeing alpacas for the first time in like real life was like surreal to me for some reason. A part of my brain was like, they're not real animals. I feel like animals don't spit. It was a great trip. Got to see a lot of cool views and it made me really happy to see all the boys being able to drive their cars for a long road trip and nobody had any issues or anything. Now it's my turn to make sure that she's ready for a long road trip with no issues or anything. What we've got done though is pretty much everything. We pretty much got everything done. So motor is in the car. We've got the intake manifold on. We've got the TGV set up. Um, fuel lines are all good. AOS is pretty much all set up. That's what this uh, hose is to both the valve covers. The only thing I really have to do now is for the... Because on the 2.5, I guess they technically like have an AOS sort of like through the valve covers, which is why there's two ports on the heads. Um, so this hose here and this hose here, I need to like tee off. I don't know if you can really see it. There it is. I need to tee it off here right under the intake manifold. And then the AOS technically like will fully be set up. Uh, everything's all wired up. And the only thing I really have left to do now besides that, that I just explained obviously is to do the timing. Timing is one of those things that I feel like I've said is pretty easy before and it is, but it still scares me every time I do it just because I feel like I'm very accident prone. I feel like I tend to make mistakes and I second guess myself a lot. But today, pretty much, I wanted to kind of try to show you guys how to time the uh, EJ motors, whether it's a 205, 257, 255, whatever the fuck. This is me trying to do my best to explain to you how to time an EJ motor. All right, so first things first, right? You're gonna wanna make sure that you've got all of the proper cam gears on the right camshafts. And they'll be labeled, so like this one is right intake cam, this one is right exhaust cam, and then over on the driver's side, that will be left intake cam and then left exhaust cam. They are labeled, as you can see right there, right intake and then right exhaust. And then this one here, I don't know if you can see, left intake. And I'm not sure that one says it, but that's left exhaust. Once you got all those on there, you're gonna wanna tighten them down to I believe it's 29 foot pounds or 22 foot pounds. It's it's 20 something foot pounds. I'll, I'll put like a caption right here because I'll look it up later, but it's 20 something foot pounds. You wanna make sure that they're all tightened down. And huge shout out to Company 23 for the tools here because it makes life a lot easier when trying to tighten them down. They hook on to the little spikes there on each cam gear and like just kind of allow you to tighten down without spinning the camshaft and worrying about hitting anything. I forgot to mention that one of the first things you're also gonna wanna do is line up the crankshaft with the marking on the uh, block, which is right there. You'll see under the crank sensor. Now that that's all said and done, everything's nice and tight, you're gonna wanna start lining up your cam gears with the markings that are on your timing cover, and I'll show you guys those right here. So on each side, both passenger and driver, you're gonna notice that you've got the marking right there on the back of the timing cover, and then the marking right there on the cam gear, which you'll see I already have lined up. And then same thing on the bottom, there's gonna be two markings on both of them. You wanna have those lined up. And then on the side, you'll see here, it's marked up with the one on the side as well. And then you flip over to the driver's side and it's gonna be the exact same thing. That one's a little bit harder to see because it's metal, but you can see that that's lined up with the marking on the, on the timing cover. And then you move down to the bottom, the double marks are lined up with the ones on the bottom cam gear. And then to the side, we've also got this cam gear lined up with the marking on said timing cover. Now we gotta get the belt on and put all the pulleys on and everything. This one down here, I'm actually gonna end up taking off because you're gonna wanna put that on at the very end after you have the entire belt lined up. Hey, baby, you okay? You all right? Ooh, she's probably hot. It's like a thousand degrees outside. Come on, you wanna go inside? Yeah, it looks like she's probably ready to go inside. All right, so when you're looking at your timing belt, right? First thing you wanna do is make sure that the letters are facing you. And then you're gonna wanna check for this dotted line here. And this dotted line is gonna go right here on top of this crank pulley. And from there, we're gonna start to line this up and there's these straight lines along the rest of the timing belt that are gonna match up with the cam gears on each side. Kind of hard to record it and explain it at the same time just cause it's me and I don't really have like a perfect spot to like show you guys everything. So I'm probably gonna like set up a time lapse for you. And then once I have it all done, I'll, I'll explain how I did it and like, you know, go through the whole process with you guys. As I mentioned before, right? You got the dotted line. You want to start with that right in the center and move along to the right. And you've got 
This first line here lines up with the line on the cam gear and also on the timing, oop, on the timing cover right there. Same thing over here. If you look, you can see the line on the belt matches the line on the timing cover, matches the line on the sprocket. And then again, on this side, line on the sprocket matches the line on the belt along with the line on the timing cover. And same with this side, line on the belt matches the line on the timing cover and with the sprocket. So everything is in line in order. Now you'll notice I took these two pulleys off because it made it a little bit easier putting this on. All we're gonna do now is the small one is gonna go right up there and that's gonna go and push this down. And then this one is gonna go down here in the bottom and it needs to go above just like so. So the trick with this one is, and if you have a socket, uh, preferably with like an extension, it'll make life a lot easier. You're gonna wanna put this on under the belt. And then the last pulley you're tossing in is this little small guy right here. Again, same as the bottom. We're just gonna put this on on top of the belt this time because this is the back of the belt. So the smooth bearings always go on the back. So just toss that John in there, tighten it down, tighten everything else down, and your Subaru is timed. Again, just go over, double, triple, quadruple check it. Make sure that everything is timed properly. Um, you can never be too careful. And then, yeah, you should be all good to go. If you have your cam gears all tightened down, you've got all those tightened down. You can throw your timing covers on. And now I'm just gonna finish the rest of this rebuild. That seemed pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure I did that right. So I hope this helped somebody out there and made it a little bit easier to understand. Once you got everything tightened down, you're gonna wanna pull this tensioner and that will push this down, give tension on the belt, make sure that everything is nice and snug. And then you can put your timing covers on. I should have said that prior, my fault guys. I do already have a tune. I just haven't downloaded it yet. Um, so we're gonna get to that. And then we're gonna toss the radiator on, get the uh, timing cover on, intake, yada, 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 add coolant for a startup. Hopefully it doesn't work. Also a huge shout out to Cameron because he gave us some new shoes, all four all around. So really appreciate him for that. I did my best with trying to align this, um, like myself, eyeballing it. So hopefully that's pretty good. Obviously I'm gonna go get a proper alignment, but as of right now, like I think that should be okay. Also SKI fog covers, because I thought they were just pretty cool. You know, little things, little things. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, subscribe. And the next video, hopefully it'll be first startup and fingers crossed that everything goes well. Peace out you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.